Good morning. I want to meditate on two feelings that are very much part of our daily life, but I don't think we've embraced them and understood how do they work, or sometimes which one comes first. You know, these two feelings, they're not, I can't call them opposite feelings, but they're very different. So one of them is anger, and the other one is sadness. Two feelings that can very much get confusing. You don't know which one you're feeling when you're facing that one specific circumstance. You know, I, I understood this not too long ago in my life. Let me, let me give you an example of what happened with me. So uh, I was scrolling through social media post updates and all of a sudden I saw this a picture where there was this young, very young, handsome little boy but he was covered with dust and blood. And I froze for a minute. I immediately went to uh, the description part to see what had happened to this little boy. And yes, where he was living, it was bombarded by the enemy. So the house that he was in, it exploded. I know uh, on the moment it looks so confusing that I'm not even sure if anybody from his family had survived or not. But just that image, I could not continue scrolling. I was, I was stuck on that image. And there were all these feelings inside of me going on. And I knew that I had to express my immediate feeling towards what I was witnessing. You know, Facebook gives you only a few options to express your feelings. And, and two of them, two of them, two of those are one of them. It's a sad face with, with a tear coming out of the eye. And the other one, it's the expression of anger. So I remember the first thing I did is, is I clicked on that sad face because I saw this little boy's face and, and the dust and the blood and the pain and confusion. But then I immediately switched it to the anger face because that's what I was feeling. I was feeling angry with the people who made this little boy to go through so much pain. After a few seconds, I must confess, I went back and I, I changed it back to the sad face. Because I, I realized that in that moment, what matters most is the victim, is the person who's suffering. And I wanted to tell him somehow that I am with you. I, I know what you're feeling and I'm praying for you. And, and I wish I could be right there just to give you a hug and help you to get out of your pain. I was confused which one I was feeling. You know, we are witnessing a lot of suffering. We're seeing endless amount of pain, blood, wars, earthquakes, pandemic. There's pain all around us. And that has been the case since the day, the time, the second when humanity decided to be their own God. We claim we claimed independence from God and we wanted our will to be done. And this will not stop until all this ends. But meanwhile, I had a question. What is God feeling right now? When I witnessed that image, as I said, I was confused. Was, am I feeling sad? Am I, am I angry? Well, what is God feeling right now as he witnesses so much pain and destruction? Is he indifferent? Is he surprised? Is he present? Is he absent? Is he feeling sad or he's angry? Which one, which one is he? You know, my, my conclusion is he's all of them. He's both of them. He's both sad and angry, but there is time for everything. You must understand that there is time to mourn and there is time to get angry. There is time to show comfort and there is time to claim and speak justice and judgment. There is time for everything. And I have a feeling that when we think of the cross, it's God's way of saying, look, judgment is coming. It will come. There is no other option. But meanwhile, I'm here to comfort the broken. I'm here to tell you that I am with you, that I feel your pain. And God showing the face that sadness is to say that I am with you in your valleys. I am with you in your pain. 
God chooses right now to comfort us, to guide us through pain, guide us through these days, even to spread help, to give us hope for tomorrow. doesn't mean that there is no God who gets angry just looking at the amount of evil and pain in His creation. But for God, for us, there is time for everything. Now I'm going to read you verses. And the first one I want you to think about God with a honest sad face and feelings looking at humanity and just wanting to comfort us. I'm going to read you from Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 through 10. Just put attention. I, I know you by, by now you've, you've guessed what I'm reading. Mountain and Jesus giving that powerful sermon. But I want you to put attention as Jesus is trying to comfort those in front of him. From verse 1 says, Now Jesus saw the crowds. He went up on a mountainside and sat down and his disciples came to him. And he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of their righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When I'm reading this, I, I just feel God, you know, it says he's just looking at the crowd and he can see how much pain there is. Confusion. How many innocent lives are suffering because of evil in this world. And he said, let, let me tell you, I am here to comfort you. I'm here to talk to you about the kingdom of heaven. You will inherit the earth. You will be filled. You will be merciful as, as you're merciful. God will show you mercy. God is, is, is looking at this. He's calling you my children. And there is a kingdom in heaven prepared, ready for you. Now, this is God clicking that sad face. But don't forget, there's also the anger part. For later, there's time for everything. And hear this words from Revelation. Chapter 20, verse 11 says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him, Jesus, who sat on it, for whose face, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books and anyone not found whose name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire in job chapter 1 describes this as the wicked are reserved for the day of doom they shall be brought out on the day of wrath there is time for everything. While we are alive, I'm going to ask you that we will imitate God. Instead of expressing all this anger and, and hatred and violence and bringing more blood and more wars, more divisions. No. I think it's time where we need to show comfort. We need to comfort people. We need to tell them, I feel your pain. There is time for anger. There is eternal judgment, but until then, we are here to comfort each other, help each other, mourn together, so we can also rejoice together. So, if you're like me and sometimes you find yourself confused, which one is? Am I sad? Am I angry? I choose to let go the anger part. And that makes me feel much more useful in the kingdom of God, in, in my community, when I choose to really share their pain and comfort them 
versus just be quick in speaking judgment and anger. Let God be the judge. How about we become Jesus' hands, eyes, feet, and heart in this world? They need it very much. So I invite you to think about this, act on this, and pray about this. God bless you.